We have 16 teams this year in the team tournament, the Ultimate Schmodown Team Tournament 2018. The theme is anarchy. So all these teams that are coming around, it's, they're all aiming for one thing, a shot at the Schmodown Spectacular against our current champions, the Shirewolves. First of all, you have Alonzo Duralde and Matt Atchity, who are the Paddington Two. Now, they've worked together before on What the Flick. They are both experienced players. And your winner! By way of technical knockout, the Paddington team. Obviously, you're going to wait and see who you're playing next. It's either going to be Manson Gerber or Snyder and Andreco. I think Manson Gerber, that'll be a better match um, in Snyder and Draco. I, You know, Snyder, that's an empty chair. Oh. oh. Ah, the in Snyder, Jeff Snyder. Ah. Mark and Draco. Yes! yes! Oh. oh. I think Jeff finally woke up from that long nap he's had since collision. Snyder and Andreco were in the lion's den together for oh, about a year. And then you had that Emma Fife stole Andreco away at last year's spectacular. How are they going to interact? Because Snyder's no longer with the lion's den, he's off on his own. Now getting them on the same page has been a, a little bit of a job for me, but I think we're doing well. We've got a mutual respect, right boys? Sure. Yes. And your winner by way of technical Regina knockout. George, played by McCreek and McCann. Draco and I are not looking past the task at hand, which is taking down Atchity and Duraldi. I think uh, I think if they're a good team, I just think we're a better one. Christian Harlow. I am Mark Ellis and Christian. We have a bear playing against Walter Matthau and Jack Lemon. What a matchup it's going to be here today. This is going to be an incredible round, incredible match because, look, round one was a lot of fun, but now we are in the elite of the elite. It's getting serious. We really are. The Paddington 2 of Alonzo Duralde, who's already proven himself to be a rising superstar in the league, and then you got the old pro in Matt Atchity, who still doesn't know the rules of round three. No, he does not. Does not watch a single match he's not in. No, he has no idea. But then you have the vets. That's right. The former team champion, Jeff Snyder. The most important man you'll ever follow on Twitter. Don't forget his phone calls. Ever. And then you have, right next to him, is Mark and Draco, who was a second away from being the champion, who just, just lost narrowly losing to our now champion, William Bibiani, managed by Roxy Stryer. This is, uh, I, this is a pick'em. Who, who, I don't know who's going to win. Yeah, I know. This is what I like when you have a lot of strengths on the wheel. When we do the tail to tape, I'm going to have to tell you to shut up because there's so many strengths that you could mention for each one of these teams. They've been here before for the most part. It's all going to come down, in my opinion, to round two. Is there going to be an opponent choice? Is there going to be a spinner's choice? That could determine the outcome of said match. I think it's going to come down to gameplay. I think it's going to come down to, in regards we say both all four of these guys know movie trivia. It's a matter of Snyder and Andreco are vets of the Schmodown itself. If the Paddington 2 can actually do that, if they can play the game, then I think they have a chance. If not, it's going to be a tough fight. And you also think about chemistry here because you can see anybody win one game if you're thrown into a uh, tournament together and you don't know your teammate that well. Now it's really who plays off each other's strengths and weaknesses better. That's going to determine the outcome of this match. Well, there is a lot of talk between both teams. Here we go. Hey guys, we're back and I've got to tell you, I'm really confident that I've got the next team champions here. I don't know what they're doing outside of this place. I don't know what they're tweeting about, but when they get in and under the lights, they kill it together. They're the odd couple that just happens to work. Very excited. Uh, oh, yeah. We are in our 
second round. Yeah. Uh, we had a couple of pros that we're up against. Uh, you know, I, I, and Draco, he's just solid. Totally, knows his stuff. Right? Um, this other guy, he's been calling me. I I, I haven't been picking up the phone. I see his I name on the wants. sheet. I kind of skip right yeah, over it. because Somebody that, you know, when we roll calls, like, oh, that one. Yeah, you know, just go, go to voicemail. Jeff and I have history back in the days of Blofeld's cat and uh, the lion's den, but it's undeniable that he's a great player, and I think we complement each other very well, and lots of times you work with people you don't like, but you do your job and you do it well. My first experience was not great. I kind of felt like we got screwed with a category that was designed to just kill us. Yes, you did, my yes, friend. Yes, courtesy of I him. I am responsible for that, but now but we know how to do that let, to somebody else. Exactly. We've let bygones be bygones, and yeah, I'm totally ready to turn that uh, opponent choice uh, the wedge on another team. And right. If it's today, so much the better. Remember, he who lives by the wheel dies, dies by the wheel. And Draco and Roxy here, they're just being polite. Okay, the last time me and this guy got together, we TKO'd the competition, and we're going to do it again today. It would be awesome to knock Snyder out. I was so close, and, you know, maybe I stuck to character a little bit more than I should have. Maybe Gray and I had a little bit too much vodka as Boris and Natasha. Uh, I am stone cold sober this time, and, uh, you know... Snyder better watch his ass. Atchity is a really smart guy who has no idea how to play this game. And I've got two smart guys who know exactly how to play this game. And that's why they're going down because they study this stuff. They don't just roll in there and think that they know what's up. They know how to play. And so they're going to do it well. You know what you get when you come across and go up against the Paddington 2? The hard stare. By the end of this match... You're going to be returning my calls. What I like there is Roxy Stryer's confidence. I mean, I can tell you already from just hosting Collider Live with Roxy Stryer. I've seen the program. Big, big fan. Do you it's like an it? honor to Good. do the show with you here today. We should have you on sometime. Sign my boobs. And then we have Roxy. She's just, just a firecracker. She says it how, is it, mm -hmm. how it is. And she did that in the interview. She's proud of her team. She's already calling them the next champions. And then Snyder and Draco, they might not be the same types of characters. Of course, they had their falling out in the lion's den. But they seem to be on the same page when it comes to this team. Then you got the Paddington 2, where Alonzo and Matt, they've known each other for a long time. They're laughing about it. They're taking some shots at Snyder, which is fair game. Um, and yeah. they are, they're they ready. They're absolutely ready to continue on because Alonzo has caught the bug. I think that Alonzo, in his first match, wasn't really happy with the way it went down. I saw him again. He said, I want another shot at this thing. He won. And now you can see that he reminds me of the way McWeenie was when McWeenie started playing. And I think Alonzo, this is, this is a big prediction, I think Alonzo is as good as McWeenie. And I think Alonzo could be a, a really strong strong competitor in this. In this and league. strong words from you. Will the odd couple be able to pay the rent? Will the Paddington 2 reach their bear paw into a jar? Is that going to be marmalade or a big pile of bear shit? Christian, give us the tale of the tape. <laughs> the tale of the tape. The Paddington 2 holiday movie. They love them. They write books about them. Absolutely. They also have 80s movies and uh, just making fun of Snyder. That's literally all it says. I, I was going to say yeah. being adorable. Have being you seen adorable? that bear? Yeah. God, he's cute. And then you have the odd couple of Snyder and Andrako Fincher movies. They also have musicals. Whether or not it's going to be on the wheel, who the hell knows. And porn. And getting people to call them back. Ah, I read that wrong. All right, so with that, I'm ready to go. And how about yourself? Ah, uh, does Frank Janish have a beard? You're damn right I'm ready to go. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia showdown. Good crowd here today. They're a hyped up partner. I would be too. Ladies and gentlemen, Vince Neal is in studio. Introducing first. With a record of one win, no defeats, and one knockout. Alonzo Geralde, Matt Acheny, the Paddington 2. Oh, yeah, the Christmas hat is the for them. They like the Christmas hat. Holiday scene. Acheny. Uh, jumping around, dancing, Alonso, yeah. all game space. They're having some fun, but they're also focused. Good combination of entertainment yeah. and focus. Yeah. Fun fact, this is the first time Matt actually has been sober for a match. Is right. that true? Yeah, I believe it is. All right. Like a holiday Jimmy Buffett. And their opponent. Led to the ring by their manager, Roxy Stryer. With a record of one win. There she is. No defeats and one knockout. 
the android, Morgan Franco, and the former movie trivia showdown team champion, Jeff Snyder, the odd couple. Such a practicing a dance. He really is. He's doing a dance. He loves Look at all the 80s nostalgia <laughs> on display with Jeff Snyder. And look at Snyder staring down. Alonzo. Alonzo not even paying attention to it. Roxy making sure yeah. that her competitors get to the ring. Yep. Okay, oh, she's uh, giving them some last words of wisdom yep. slash affection. Boy, what a panel we have here today. Yeah. All right. So as we have our team sit down, Mark, how does round number one work? In round number one, each team is going to hear eight questions. These are eight questions. Each question comes from a different corner of the movie Trivia Galaxy. Now, this is a team match, but keep in mind in round one, it's all about the knowledge you yourself possess. You may not rely on your teammate for the answer. Each answer is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round one. As soon as we ask each question up here at the answer desk, you're going to have about 15 seconds in that time we need you to write down your best attempt at an answer. When we ask you by name to reveal your attempt, please show what you wrote down on the whiteboard to the camera provided or verbalize it in the microphone, or better yet, do both. I'll remind each team of your three usages of the JTE rule throughout the match. If you're not sure you heard a question correctly, you need to repeat it, or you just need to buy yourself some time, use a JTE rule, and each team has one challenge to use throughout the duration of the three-round match. All right, now that the rules have been read, I will ask the odd couple, are you guys ready? Yes. Okay, the Paddington 2, are you ready? Yeah. Oh, yes. Then let's get ready to schmoot <laughs> Round number one, question number one. Here we go, guys, in the category of horror slash thriller. Who plays famed novelist Paul Sheldon in 1990's Misery? I think we should implement a rule where you ask if people are ready. They have to verbally say yes. So. Or uh, allow like you're sitting in the exit row of an airplane. Five, four, three, two, one. Matt Atchity. James Caan. Correct. Mark. James Caan, who oh. replaced Warren Beatty. Oh, Alonzo. Jimmy Caan. Yep. And Snyder. James Caan. Tied up. There we go. Your next question comes from the world of action adventure movies. And your question is, Speed opens with Jack Traven and Harry Temple trying to save civilians from where after a bomb goes off? Talk about bomb goes off. Snyder had Taco Bell today. Oh, boy. I walked into the studio. Dad Williams walking out, throwing away a bag of Chipotle. No, What's going five, to happen? Four, three, two, one, and Mr. Andreco. An elevator? Correct, Alonzo. Nakatomi Plaza. <laughs> Incorrect, <laughs> Snyder. Going up, elevator. Yes, and actually. Uh, an elevator. Got it, okay, so there we go, four, three. Down. Yes. Is that elevator in Nakatomi Plaza? No. Do you, sh quiet, do you want to challenge it? <laughs> Snyder, do you, quiet, do you want to challenge I, I, no, it? Let's no, let's actually. not, let's not. Why? I, why are you helping out your opponents? I don't understand. I love because I want to. Because I'm a friendly, <laughs> nice guy. All right. <laughs> the biggest laugh of the day. All right. Question three is dramas. Dramas. Who plays Gene Kranz, the head of Mission Control, in 1995's Apollo 13? Uh, I've seen another space movie recently. What's that? I think you're really going to enjoy. What's that, Space Jam? Uh, <laughs> no. I saw an Five, early cut of Space Jam 2 four, at the Toronto three, Film Festival. Hold it to the next question. Two, one, pens down, please, and Alonzo. Ed Harris? You are correct. Snyder. Edward Ed Harris. Yes. Actually? Ed Harris and his new vest. Yes. Yes. And Mark. Ed Harris. And the odd couple still perfect so far. All right. Let's, let's clean up the penmanship, Andreco. That was barely legible. All right. Here we go. Next what? question. Next, next question comes from the world of animated movies. These are movies that are drawn by hand or on a computer, probably. Your question is, Christopher McDonald provides the voice of Kent Mansley, a paranoid government agent in what? 90s animated classic. Shooter. Uh, <laughs> hey, you want to go to Red Lobster? Really good. Classic. Remember yep. when Adam Sandler Five. made those movies? Yep. Four, three, it's good time. Two, one. Pens down. And Jeff Snyder. Chicken Little. Incorrect. Actually. I had nothing. I have no idea. And Draco. Iron Giant. Correct. Oh. Alonzo. Lilo and Stitch. Wow. Okay. So only Andrago gets it, but Andrago is the only person to be perfect here. So he's playing with a perfect round. It's a Seven, really bad five. handwriting. Are y'all writing in wingdings? Let's try for uh, <laughs> Times New Roman. Next question. Zap Dingfats. Next question is from Fantasy Sci-Fi. 
In 1985's Legend, according to the Law of the Forest, it is a sin for a human to touch which creature? I like this movie. I, I just, I've never seen it, but I like that the forest has laws. Yeah. I bet they say it really regal, like, you're Five, violating the law of the forest. Four, three, two, one, pence down, Matt Atchity. Unicorn. Yes, sir, Mark Andre. I was going to say a declared suppressive, but a unicorn. <laughs> That's correct. And Alonzo? Unicorn. Yep, Snyder. Goat. Oh, Snyder Ooh. misses. And within one point, with one point, the same. You're, you're confusing that with what happened to you in high school. Huh. Uh, the sacred goat oh, of the forest. Boy. All right, here we go. Next question. Mark Andre is still. Vibes thrown. Quiet. Here we go. Next question. All right. I'll remind the audience if they don't shut up, we are turning this car around and nobody gets ice cream. Yeah, beast. The world of comedies is up next. These are comedies, funny movies. In 1994's Muriel's Wedding, Tony Collette plays a socially awkward Australian who is obsessed with what 70s pop band? Uh, what 70s band are you most obsessed with? You cannot say the doors, they were yeah, already just... done for the most part. <laughs> oh, that's a good Five. Answer. Good answer. Four, you're Van Halen. Tie Three, your mother down. Two, one, pens down, and we have Mark Hendrick. This one was for the gays in the audience. <laughs> Abba! Correct. Uh, that and Drake. Life is better than an Abba song. Yes, and Snyder. There was something in the air that night. Abba. Yeah. Abba. Abba, all around the horn. So one point. But Mark and Drake are still perfect here after our six points. Four dancing queens on the stage. Watch me, right? All right, here we go, guys. Crime. Crime movies. Who stars as the unnamed cocaine dealer who faces a tough assignment on the eve of his early retirement in 2004's Layer Cake. What is the name of your Coke dealer? Mark Ellis. <laughs> the guy knows where his bread is buttered. Am I He's, right, kids? No, he plays baseball. <laughs> Five, <laughs> you son four, three, two, one. Pens down, please, and Alonzo. Jason Statham? It's incorrect, Snyder. 007 Daniel Craig. Correct. If I knew Daniel Craig's name, I'd be smarter than him. And Mark. Oh, I missed it. Okay. So 11-10, still keeping that one point. And Drago doesn't go perfect, but they are still up by one point. Final question here. Your last category in round one comes from the world of the Patreon. This question is provided by Jonathan Peck. Jonathan Peck, thank you for your supportage of the Patreon. You guys can check out the movie trivia showdown Patreon. Select which tier is right for you. Maybe we'll say your name while reading a question one day down the road. Jonathan Peck, his category is war movies. And his question is, which famous singer played the soldier Alex in the movie Dunkirk? I like that Dunkirk a lot. That's right. Really good movie. Apparently Jonathan Peck does too. He's five, a war film. Four, three. Two, one. The insider. It's what actually doesn't have any of style. Harry Styles. Correct. Actually, wow. it's not Nick Jonas. No, it is not. <laughs> Harry Styles. Correct. Alonzo. Harry Styles. Got it. All right. So, so close with the One Direction guess, but didn't quite nail 13, it. 13, 11. 13, 11. So now the odd couple has a two-point lead. Two-point lead over the Paddington two, and we get into round number two. In round number two, now the teams can consult with one another to come up with their best attempt at a correct answer. Each team gets one spin at that their wheel, the wheel of justice, doom, perhaps fate for one of the competitors. Each question that you get on your category of choice is going to be worth two points. If you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options. Uh, you select one of those. If it's correct, you get one point. Keep in mind, competitors are is stealing in round two, and I'll remind everybody that we have two sponsored wheel slices today, courtesy of our Patreon. They are James Bond movies and modern classics. You get one of those, we're going to say the name of the patron who did support those wheel slices. Let's take a look at the score, shall we? The odd couple finds themselves at a two-point advantage over the Paddington 2, so it's up to the couple. Would you like to spin first, or would you like to defer? We're going to defer and oh, let okay. them go. Let the Paddingtons right. go. You spin. Okay. Alonzo, and please spin from the wheel, not the pegs. Yes, not grab the so peg. Please. There you go. There you go. See, even That's a good. bear can listen to our simple yeah. instructions. It's a soft spin, but it still makes the wheel go round and just, round, so we're going to accept it. Caress that peg. Look at this. Oh, no. Look at this, Christian. Spinner's choice right off the bat. Spinner's of choice. Oh. Spinner's choice. I bet you I know where they're going. You, you think they go I right to I, holiday absolutely. movies? They're wearing Santa hats. Holiday, holiday There they go. There they go indeed. <laughs> now, Alonzo Duralde wrote of the book on holiday movies, literally. He literally wrote a book on holiday movies, which you guys can check out. It is, I believe, called The 48 Days of Christmas. 
I don't think that's the that's, title. It was I incorrect? Uh, Alonzo, plug your book. Here's the chance. Uh, have yourself a movie, Little Christmas. Uh, it's available in paperback and on Kindle. There you go. So now he's really happy he spun that wheel. All right, here we go. So we're going to start up. We're going to start that up here. That was his Patreon slide. It was. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Uh, six questions. Wrote the six book questions. On. Here we go, guys. Six questions. Question one. Complete this quote from Love Actually. To me, you are blank. Perfect. Correct for two points. Oh, isn't right. that nice? Don't mind me. I'm going to take a nap. Right. <laughs> Who directed the Thanksgiving movie Home for the Holidays? Jodie Foster. Two points. Okay. He's writing another yeah. book here, Christian. Who played deceased father who returns as a snowman to put things right with his son <laughs> in the 1998 family drama Jack Frost? Michael Keaton. Correct. Somebody gets smelling salts for Matt Ashton. It's not even hard. Yeah. What is the first name of Kevin McAllister's Pepsi-loving, bedwetting little brother in Home Alone? Multiple choice, please. Is it A, Tommy, B, Buzz, C, Mark, D, Fuller? D. D is Fuller is correct for one point. Why would he make Mark an option yeah. there? I've never wet the bed yeah. since, like, ninth grade. All right, <laughs> here he goes. Two more questions. Two more questions. What food does Buddy become obsessed with when he moves in with his dad in Elf? Spaghetti. Two points. All right. Oh, sorry we had to make yeah. you work there, Ash. Right. Sorry. And here Interrupted my nap. Last question. Last question. What is the surname of the two sisters who joined up with Bing Crosby and Danny Kaye in White Christmas? The Haynes sisters. That is correct for two points. Wow. Well, well, it worked out. Six questions. Hey, you know what? That's why Spinner Stories is on the yeah. wheel for moments like that and yeah. Alonzo and actually pitching in there too, making the yeah. most of their spin. But look, so now now the odd couple has a chance. If they hit something they're strong in, but they took holiday movies off and I don't think they wanted that. Go ahead, Snyder, spin it. And There's here he goes. Now they're looking for they're gonna be looking for Fincher. They're gonna be looking right. for eighties movies, maybe even modern day classics here. Could be modern classics. Yeah. And here we go. Is it going to be modern classics? Modern classics. Modern classics. That's one that hasn't been taken yet. All right. Can I? Uh, yeah. yeah. Spin again. Wow. I'm shocked. Be quiet. <laughs> if you're not sure, we can keep it up to you. You got, you got five seconds. It's wow. I agree. And they're going to spin again. They're spinning away control. from the Patreon oh, user. Shocked. Oh, boy. That was shocking. That that's, was shocking. A, that's a bummer for that Patreon user. Hopefully they spin it again. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Look at this, Christian. Oh! Wow. Just missing it. Nicole Kidman. Nicole Kidman it is. And wow. I'm I'm shocked that they went away from modern classics. Yeah, you, you got to wonder if that paid off. And you got to yeah. wonder why the crowd doesn't like Nicole Kidman nearly as much as they like Meryl Streep. Interesting yeah. turn of events here. All right, here we go. Your first question in the wild, fabulous, good-smelling world of Nicole Kidman. <laughs> Which film featuring Nicole Kidman has the tagline, warning, may cause toe tapping? Five, four, three, two. Multiple choice. Is it A, Moulin Rouge, B, Happy Feet? C, watch the shadows dance, or D, nine. Happy feet. For one point. There they go. All right, your next question. In the world of Nicole Kidman movies. That's kind of bullshit. Who stars alongside Nicole Kidman as a pair of witch sisters in 1998's Practical Magic? Mm -hmm. Five, four, yeah, that's it, right? three. Sandra Bullock. Uh, that is correct. Two Give points. him two points. And your next question. What was the first film Nicole Kidman and hunk Tom Cruise starred in together? Days of Thunder. That's Give him two more points. Oh, yeah. And now they're within range of Paddington 2 if they can close out the round with a good three set here in the second half. Your next question. In the 1989 thriller Dead Calm. How does John and Ray Ingram's son die in the opening scene? Five. Uh, multiple choice. Okay, is it A, a car accident, B, drowned, C, allergic reaction, or D, cancer? Uh, I'm gonna guess drowned. You are gonna be incorrect. So now for the steal, your options are A, car accident, B, drowned, C, allergic reaction, or D, cancer. 
Uh, D, cancer. That is also incorrect. <laughs> We're looking for a car accident. Uh, right. All right, sorry. question five. Tough, Coming up tough, here. Choice of three two times in a row. Question five. Your penultimate question in round number two, the odd couple. In 2016's Lion, who plays Lucy, Saru's girlfriend, who he meets at university in Melbourne? Rooney Mara. Two points for the odd couple. If they get this last question right, they will have tied Paddington 2. Excuse me, the Paddington 2. Your last question, odd couple. The wild world, the wonderful world of Nicole Kidman. <laughs> Who stars as Nicole Kidman's eccentric daughter in Chanwook Park's 2013 indie thriller, Stoker? Mia Wasikowska? God, we hated that. Watch that. That was a tough one to watch for me. What a anyway. round. What a round. We find ourselves tied going yeah. into round three. This is the match we thought we would get. That was a hell of a battle there where the Paddington 2 hit their movie, and then you had, excuse me, they had holiday movies, and then you had the odd yep. couple hitting all of Nicole Kidman, a lot of them just missing that one. So we are tied up here going into round three. Mark, how does round three work? Round number three works. This is the round that will determine the fate, although it is tied. So there is the chance that we go into sudden death extra innings here. In round number three, each team is going to give us a series of numbers. These numbers range from one to 20. Each number corresponds to a different movie trivia category up here at the answer desk. Here's how it works. The first number you give us is going to be your two-point question. Once we tell you the category, the team is going to have to decide which team member is going to answer that. You must answer that individually. You may not consult with your teammate for the two-pointer. The other teammate will have to answer the three-pointer on their own. You may consult together only for the five-point question. I think each team has all of their JTE rules yep. and their challenges intact in case you need a reminder that you can use those. The odd couple were tied, but you are the favorite going into the match. So which three numbers, ranging from 1 to 20, would you like to employ? 19. 19. 14. 14. 4. 4. So all 19, right. 14, 14, 4 for four. the odd couple. Padding in 2. 2. 2. two. 11. 11. 15. 15. Mix of odds and evens, yeah. both teams, they're really right. switching it up. So we're going to start off with the Paddington 2 here, who chose category number two. Category number two, comic book movies. Comic book movies. Who's taking the comic movies? Uh, I'll take the comic book movies. For two points. What was Jim Carrey's first appearance in a film based on a graphic novel? The Mask. Correct, for two points. <laughs> Have us the lead. All right. I want to challenge that. Okay, what's the challenge? Um, the Mask was a comic book before it was a graphic novel. That was a collection of comic book issues. It was never an original graphic novel. Those terms are not synonymous. Okay, well, here we go. Let's uh, let's go. We're gonna take the challenge, and here we go. After consulting with judges, we have a ruling, and because the question was unclear, it was a graphic novel, and it was actually based on comic book source material, it was just a collection of graphic novel, we have elected to neither award the Paddington 2 or take away their points. We are simply going to ask another two-point question in the world of comic book movies to Matt Atchity, and hopefully this one will be free of confusion. And because of that, the Odd Couple does get to keep their challenge. Um, we will ask another question to Matt Atchity in the world of comic book movies. Worth two points. All right, Matt, here you go. What non-superhero comic character received a 2011 film directed by Steven Spielberg? Five. Four. Repeat three. the question, please. First one. What non superhero <coughs> comic character received a 2011 film directed by Steven Spielberg? Five. Four. Three. Two. Tintin? Correct. <gasps> wow. Correct. All right, so. That's maybe the shyest correct answer I've ever yes. heard. He barely whispered yeah. it into the mic, but it gave him two points. All right, the stress of it is real. All right, so now we go Now we go to the odd couple who has a two-pointer in the realm. Category 19, the realm of. Say it, Mark, and say it loud. So they pick category 19. Everybody, get loud, get proud for Meryl Streep. Woo! No chance? Meryl Streep. Wow. 
All right. right, here we go. Here's your question in the wild, wonderful world that smells just as good as Nicole Kidman's Meryl Streep's. I'm taking it, by the way. All right. <laughs> Meryl Streep portrays Margaret Thatcher in what film released in 2011? The Iron Lady. Two points. Okay. Right. And Drake was seemingly annoyed that he had to give a correct yeah. answer. <laughs> <laughs> so now he jumped back to Alonzo Duralde, who will get the three-pointer for the Paddington 2, and that is Category 11. Category 11, which is Action Adventure. Action Adventure. Okay. In Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, which of the four main actors is the first to lose a life in the game? Five, four, three. The Rock. Jack Black. Jack Black was the answer. So now, now we jump back to Jeff Snyder to see if they can hit their three-pointer here and take a lead. All right, you chose category number 14, is that correct? And Mr. Snyder, that goes to the world of comedy. The world of comedy. And your question is, how many films did Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor co-star in? Three. Yeah, I'll give you 20 seconds. Oh, you got, oh you, that's it. Three. He's, no, it's incorrect. <laughs> incorrect. We were looking for four. Four. All right. You had 20 seconds to answer. You did it in half a second. All right. So now we jump back to the Paddington 2, who has to answer their five-pointer. If they miss it, then it goes to the odd couple. Then it goes to the odd couple to try to win the game. If they hit it, they have a chance to win the game. Here we go. So the Paddington 2. The Paddington 2 no has I mean, that one I remember. category 15. Category 15, Summer guys. Scene. Category 15, Tarantino films. Hmm. Tarantino. All right, guys, for your five-pointer, what is the name of Django's wife in Django Unchained? Brunhilde. They, she had pronounced it wrong. That is incorrect. It is Broom. Hilda, yep. Not he, Broom. he said Broom. He said Broom. Yep. He said Broom Hilda. Agreed. He did, he, yeah. he, the answer is Broom yep. Hilda. You just say Broom question. Hilda? Broom. Broom, broom like broom what you Hilda. sweep with. He said Broom Hilda. He said, you, you can challenge it like if you like. Like the 70s comic strip? Yep. You can challenge <laughs> it if you'd like. You guys. Can. Yeah, I'd like to challenge Let's it. challenge it. Why challenge not? We're at the, the end. That's fine. The <laughs> challenge is at the table here. The challenge is that her name was Brunhilde and not, in fact, Broomhilda. And we're going to challenge that right now. Yeah. All right. The challenge on the table. We did the search. We looked. It is, in fact, Broom with an M, Broomhilda, missing it with one letter there. And Alonzo, unfortunately, said Broomhilda. And it now jumps to the Paddington two, excuse me. It now jumps to the odd couple who can win the game here if they hit their five pointer. If they miss it, we go to sudden death. <laughs> All right, and the odd couple, your question comes in the world of Oscar movies. These are movies that were of some note during the Oscars. Your question worth five points, who? was the last director to win Best Director in their directorial debut. Repeat Re the question. Who was the last director to win Best Director in their directorial debut? Five, four, three, two. Repeat the question. Who? We have one more repeat after this, right? Yeah, that was two. Yeah. Yeah, th 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 Who was the last director to win Best Director in their directorial debut? Five, four, three, two. Repeat the question. Who was the last director to win Best Director oh, yeah. in their directorial yeah. debut? So. All right. Five. So. Here goes nothing. Four, Three. Sam Mendes. And your winners! Yes! Oh. Ladies oh. and gentlemen, oh. yes. Yes. Jack Draco, Jeff Snyder, the odd couple. Five points off. Using from all of 
the JT Eagles at their disposal using the challenges. What a win here for the odd. Very well played game by the Paddington, too, as well. But the odd couple, I guess this is why you're supposed to take their phone calls. Brunhilde sunk them. They had it, they had it tied there. And Brunhilde takes them out at the very end. But it was it, actually you know, Daralde playing absolutely incredibly. What a battle there, 29-24, nothing to hang your head there. Good what team incredible, chemistry incredible by them, play. too. I mean, yeah. it literally came down to one letter, Christian, and that letter is right next to the other letter that if they had hit, we'd be in overtime right now. So how about that? The odd couple goes on to play either Breanne Chandler and Drew McWeeny mm -hmm. of Take the Cannoli or how about this? The Evil Geniuses. That's right. Little Evil, JTE or Lon Harris. That would be something if that indeed happens. Snyder and Andreco advancing. They are 2-0 and in a hard-fought victory. We get to talk to Jen Sturger. has got them both, pal. Here we go. What's up, Movie Trivia Schmodown fans? Jen Sturger here with the Paddington 2. Guys. Wow. That was, Matt, first of all, that was one of the best matches you've ever played. Me? I have to say here. I mean, that was, was and all him. I mean, crushed. Holiday movies. Well, you know, who knew it was a wedge? But then as soon as I saw it in the bin, I was like, Get this, please. <laughs> so uh, just a, a lucky spin. You literally picked it out backstage? Oh, totally, yeah. B because I didn't find out until about 10 minutes beforehand that we actually get to pick a couple every time. Oh. Well, I guess it's not a shock that two guys wearing Santa hats would crush that category. <laughs> uh, but you guys came up just short, and you're probably the only people matter that she was named Broomhilda than M, she is. M, Broom. one lover, M. Yes, M. well, it turns M out. M stands for mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, Quentin Tarantino. Once again, you've made my Sorry. life less pleasurable. Quentin um, Taran Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino. Tarantino. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I Googled it, and uh, Broomhilda only exists in Django Unchained and in the 1970s comic strip. And beyond that, it's Broomhilda with an N. So this right. was a very specific thing, and I very specifically missed it. I guess, but there we go. Oh, guys, it was a pleasure watching that match. It may go down as one of the best matches in this tournament. It was oh, a it was well, a good match, and uh, we had a blast. Yeah. And and now we get to watch the rest of it, so that'll be right. fun too. Does I know somebody mean, will be getting coal in his stocking. Does this mean you're going to be rooting for the odd couple going forward? Because if you're going to lose, no. lose to the Hell best, no. lose to the best. Hell no. No, I, no, we need to see them. Somebody has to make them cry. Yes. Just because we didn't. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> And we're back with the odd couple. Guys, uh, what, what are you wearing? <laughs> These are my biking gloves, because I'm going for a ride after this. Oh my God. You know, Snyder, after your match against Bibiani, a lot of people, I think, were, were counting you out. And it's almost like this tournament has kind of rejuvenated you in a way. I think it's playing with a class act like Mark Andreco, who has brought out the best in me. Just team, the team league has always uh, invigorated me. Wow. Were you guys drinking before this match? All of a sudden, there's this new bromance. I feel like stirring here. Yeah, I mean, I said, I said backstage, if you know, if, if we if we make it through to the end and we win, we should stay a team, and maybe even not. Maybe I, maybe I'm bringing him over into the Fife Club good side. But not, there's nothing better than Whoa, a good redemption story. I didn't even story. know I was being recruited for this. But yeah, Mark was definitely story. drinking before this match. So guys, I, I think out there we have to say you guys played a very ex well ex well played match. You know, the knowledge was there, but you guys actually played the game well. And is that just part of the teamwork that you guys have been working on? I think that coming into here, you have the knowledge you have, but how you actually play the game is what creates champions. And that's where I see these guys going because the fact that they knew to use the JTE rule three times in the end, they never would have gotten that five pointer if they didn't have that left. The fact that they challenged, the fact that they listened carefully enough to hear Brune instead of Broom, that's why these guys won the game. And they talked after every single time they could talk. They conferred with each other when they could and they didn't just shout out answers. And without that, they would not be standing here as the victors of the day. You can chalk up our, our victory today to experience, you know, uh, again, we needed all three of those JTE rules. We needed all that time to think about the Sam Mendes answer, which came to us at the last second. I know Roxy was mad that I, I shouted out the, the answer to the Gene Wilder question and blew our three points. I just didn't know that. that I would have said three either, either, the fourth movie. Yeah, I, I, thought, I, I never... was between two and four, whatever. Yeah. I, just, I just made a guess. And I got to say, Roxy has been an exemplary manager, both backstage, calming us down, getting us focused, and Last the last the first time Jeff and I uh, fought, I answered questions too quickly and probably cost us a couple of points, even though we won. So I was very conscious to learn because if like Jeff, don't like Jeff. Jeff is a font of knowledge, and by by and by talking to each other, it sometimes jars stuff that we knew. And that Sam Mendes question, thank God for those three JTE rules because I was two seconds behind him and going down back in time. And when he said it, I was like, 
that's, these that's these guys played very well. I don't want to take anything away oh, from, from Alonzo or, or Atchity, Um, But you know what? They, they got Spinner's Choice. They got holiday movies. If they hadn't even gotten that, I'm not so sure they would, even would have been in the game there at the end. Yeah, you're round two. I mean, maybe I'm maybe I'm a little behind the, the game here, but I was shocked that you guys were so good at Nicole Kidman. Well, you know, she's she's done a lot of movies, but it's not like it's Sam Jackson where he's done like 184 yeah. of them. And knowing that a lot of people avoid her, they're not going to be too deep questions. They did get deep with Stoker, though. And the problem for me is when it's an actor category, I always forget to think about their animated movies. Because if I if I remembered that, that when the moment he that said... That was a good oh, call going to multiple cause, choice. Cause he, happy yeah, because he said, I said, it's not Moulin Rouge. And he said, well, maybe it's... nine it's, or Moulin it's Rouge. It's nine. But neither like, one is I'm the like, tagline there, makes sense for those. Yeah, there's no tap dancing in nine, so... Is that a happy feet question? Yeah. 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 Oh. Future's so bright, Roxy's putting on shades oh, now. Yeah. So, guys, next. who's next? Well... That's the thing. You're either going to face the evil geniuses, Lon and JTE, uh-huh. or you're going to face Take the Cannoli, which is McGuini and Brianne. Either of those kind of stick out to you like, Ehh! I think they're both... Could go, it could go either way. I think they're uh, they're great. They're great teams. They're great players. I think it's going to be like one of these matches, and that's what this that's what this tournament should be. It should be close matches. If it's ever a blowout, that's no fun. Even when you lose, if you lose by a point and it's tough and it's tight, those are fun matches. It's so funny. I was yeah. sitting next to you backstage when Bri- when Brianne's match was going on, and you were like, "Oh God, please don't let them win," because <laughs> you didn't want to face them. Are you still like a little? Scared? Well, you know. D- the, the, the two of them, they, they complement each other very well, and Drew is, of course, a major force. But now, after now, I feel like Jeff and I are in sync, and I felt like this was I feel like this was the best game I've ever played, as far as technique goes. Um, so I think I think whoever it's going to be, it's going to be tough, but it's going to be a well fought battle, and it, ultimately it'll be fun for the fans. Doesn't matter who it is, Mark. Okay, just tell them we're going to answer the call. Trust me, defeat champions us. Back to you guys. Look, Snyder, feeling good. Hit a, that was like hitting a shot, a three-pointer right off the court. Your last JTE rule, using it right. Shades of it. Ray Allen in the finals against my beloved San Antonio Spurs. Just when you think we're going to overtime, a dagger from the corner, courtesy of the in Snyder. Yeah, and you can tell these two are starting to play together very well. They're starting to vibe together. Roxy Stryer is excited. This is a team to look out for. With one more victory, they have gotten themselves into the finals. They're in the semifinals now, Mark, and they have a chance to play for those titles now. They're only two victories. The first team to be two victories away from getting a title shot against the Shire Wolves. And how crazy would that be if Mark Andreco played against the Shire Wolves for the And title? you look at the Paddington, too. I mean, I, it's definitely not the last we've seen from either competitor, but I think them sticking together as a team, maybe in a future event somewhere down the road, could behoove them because they really do bounce off each other pretty well. Maybe the difference with the odd couple was the fact that Roxy Stryer as a manager has such a good hold on what these gentlemen's strengths are. She really has them in shape yeah. going into to the next round. Look, I'll tell you what, though. You look at, this is what I said in the beginning, though. I will say this is the best game that Atchity has played thus far, as far as game overall. Sure. But you see how well the odd couple, they play their challenge, they play the JTE rules, they save their JTE rules, yep. they know how to play the games. They're vets of the league, you can tell, and that's why they're 2-0 and now going into this next battle. And that's why you should join the Movie Trivia Schmodown Patreon, so you can get all the latest and greatest with the matches, whole lot of bonus features for whatever tier you select. Check out the Movie Trivia Schmodown Patreon and select which one is right for you. Hollywood, Hollywood or Halloween is a Halloween, Halloween. You got those confused. Not even close. Horror movies. Horror movies, we're going to do a full-on exhibition because of Halloween. It's going to be an exhibition match exclusive for the patrons. That's this month. And they make them in Hollywood. So that's Christian Harloff. I'm Mark Ellis. Check out the Movie Trivia Schmodown Facebook page. Check out the Schmodown Rundown. And, uh, you know, check us out. You see us on the street. Give him a hug. Give me a high five. How's it going, guys? If you didn't know about the Patreon, you guys have a chance to support the Schmodown. Now, myself, Mark Ellis, we've taken over the production. Basically, you guys have 16 tiers to choose from. We're trying to give back to the fans. Go and check it out right there. If you want to support the Schmodown by becoming a patron today, go ahead and do it. Cannot thank you guys enough for all the support you've given us. And, yeah, there's some really crazy tiers in there. I'd love to get your opinions on it. Now, go enjoy the match. Go do it. It's a good match, for God's sakes.